welcome back to Showcase. And joining us this evening, we have Roxy Gordon. Who has a new album out called Crazy Horse Never Die. Uh, tell us a little bit, uh, Roxy, where'd you, where did you get your start in music? I've been playing in uh, like living room bands for 20 years. I uh, played in bands in New Mexico and Texas and uh, Montana for that matter. Uh, but this particular thing started about five years ago. There's a guy in California that used to be in the Kingston Trio way back there. His name is John Stewart. He had a record company called Homecoming Records. He had heard some of my stuff and uh, poetry, mostly. And uh, he wanted to put out an album of uh, poetry with music. So we put together a band, and uh, that never quite worked out. Uh, that record never came out, but I knew this guy in England. And uh, he liked what we're doing, so we put together another record for him, which came out in the United States actually about six months ago. Can you tell us a little bit, bit more about some of the people that you worked with on the album? Yeah. Um, the, uh, the person who put it together is a guy named Brad Bradley. He produced it. He plays keyboard and uh, guitar on it. And did a lot of the, he and I arranged it together. And then the, uh, the other person on it is a uh, painter in Dallas named... Uh, Frank X. Talbert II, his father's the one that started the Terlingua chili cook-off and all that, and the Talbert's chili parlors. Anyway, Frank played washtub bass on the album. Frank no longer plays with us, but he played on the album with us. What, well, what kind of music is it? Tell, tell us a little bit about uh, that. Some of it's kind of countryish, some of it's kind of folkish. It's a synthesizer. It's a little bit of everything. What we did was we figured each piece, we would uh, fit it, uh, fit the music to the piece we were doing. Well, what where can we hear this? Like, uh, do, is it on any local radio stations? Like in Dallas, Dallas, yeah. Uh, Cano Inn plays it. Uh, in their morning shows, uh, let's see, Kathy Gould has been playing it on Thursday morning and Ann Armstrong on Friday morning. And KERA has been playing it. Uh, I think they play it all day in all mm -hmm. their shows. I, I really don't know exactly, but I know it's been played on their shows. So how is your album doing in the U.S. now? You got me. It's for sale. <laughs> We've got it in Sound Warehouse in uh, Dallas, at least. I don't know where it's at exactly. And uh, some bookstores in Dallas, Paperbacks Plus in Lakewood, and uh, Shakespeare on Greenville, and uh, Highland Park Books in uh, Travis Walton, the Highland Park. Those places, I know for sure it's for sale. People tell me they see it for sale other places, but those are the ones that I know I've seen it for sale in. So it's actually been distributed by... Another company besides the ones who put it out in England, a, a company called Heartland Records. I know it's for sale in Los Angeles. Somebody said they saw it out there, but I don't have any direct accounting where it's for sale. Mm. Um, so you've been, how, about how long have you been, you've been? With this band, we've been doing it, uh, with this particular band now, about three years. I actually started doing this sort of thing about five years ago. What other interests do you have? All right, I've got, um, uh, five books in print, more or less, right now. A hardback that came out many years ago that you can still find around from in Sino Press in Austin. Uh, that was Bill Whitless Press. He's the guy that wrote the screenplay to Lonesome Dove, the TV show. Mm -hmm. He had this press call in Sino. He put out a hardback many years ago. I wrote it when I was 23 years old. It's an autobiography. You can imagine you're 23 years old writing an autobiography. <laughs> And then uh, in 84, I believe, a press in Austin put out a book called Breeds, which is still available a lot of places. And then there are three chapbooks out. A book of poetry called Unfinished Business, which I also have a tape with. We recorded that with music. And uh, a uh, chapbook called West Texas Mid-Century, which is all West Texas stuff. And then the, uh, a book of the lyrics to the Crazy Horse album that's uh, just been published. Mm -hmm. I understand that you're a Choctaw Indian. Yeah. And um, are these books, have the f first one that you wrote when you were 23, is this about your heritage? Uh, a little bit, not a lot. The one that's mostly about being Indian is the one that came out in 84, 85, whatever year. It's called Breeds, and it's mostly trying to uh, rationalize being a half-breed, being part white and part Indian. The first book has a lot to do with Indians, but it's not too personal in that sense. So, can you tell us a little more about your heritage? Or? Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm Choctaw on both sides of my family. Uh, but on, an, on my uh, mother's father's side, I'm also a fifth generation Texan. Uh, so, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a genuine breed. I got <laughs> lo lots of white, lots of Indians. 
Um, could you tell us um, a little bit about, you, know, you, you mentioned just briefly some of your painting that you do a little yeah, bit I paint. I've uh, done a lot of book illustration in the past, made a living doing that for a while. And I've had, uh, I don't know, let's see, six shows, I guess, in the past few years, San Antonio and Austin and in Dallas. And then I've been in some group shows. I do uh, also sculpture. Been in some uh, uh, group uh, sculpture shows in, uh, in Dallas also. So you're sort of just a jack of all trades, then, <laughs> I guess so, actually. Yeah, really. um, could you, do you have a, um, this is sort of catching you off guard, but um, do you happen to have a, a favorite poem that you've written that you might, um, could recite for us? No. You don't have any? I really don't have Okay. Um, well, we have a song. We have one of your songs. And uh, I think it's um, Crazy Horse is Still, Al is still Alive. Is that yeah, right? that's more or less a title piece off the album. Um, the deal was I had uh, met this guy, Odwin, who's a Syrian poet. He was over here on some State Department tour. And uh, these people called me up, God knows, from the State Department, and asked me if I would uh, entertain him for lunch one day. Uh -huh. So uh, he came over, figured out I was Indian, and uh, he had um, he had written a thing that said that uh, he compared the Palestinians to the Indians. And so I wrote this poem for Audley, and it became the title poem of the album. Let's, well, let's just hear a little bit about uh, that. And this is uh, Crazy Horse is Still Alive by uh, Roxy Gordon. Crazy Horse is Alive for the Syrian poet Mamdou Adwan. I think it has something to do with the Middle East. Crazy Horse never died. Crazy Horse never died, man. He's still alive. White men came to Crazy Horse's home. They wanted buried resources there to run their white man's world, but Crazy Horse said no. Crazy Horse said what lies beneath this Black Hill soil is our own. Crazy Horse. Well, tell us, tell us a little bit about um, that song. The song has a lot of a meaning to you. What sort of... Well, what I was saying was, odd one now. He had been to a, uh, what they said was a war crimes trial in Tokyo that uh, was directed across, against the Israelis after they invaded Lebanon. And he had uh, delivered a paper there in which he compared the Palestinians with American Indians. And I'd been thinking very much the same thing. So I wrote that uh, sort of, uh, you know, I say um, they wear funny things on their heads and they take hostages and they were terrorists. Very much the same way people talk about the uh, Palestinians now. Who are some of your music idols? Oh, Lord. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, when I was a kid, uh, it was mostly country music. And then uh, after that, uh, Bob Dylan and the Rolling Stones, without a doubt. Um, a lot of people uh, you may or may not have ever heard of, uh, and all the Nashville people. I've been involved in Nashville a lot. Billy Joe Shaver, Towns Van Zant, uh, Richard Dobson. These are all Nashville songwriters. I have, uh, dealt with Nashville for many years. In fact, probably I'm going to be writing some songs with a Nashville guy. We did a show in Austin uh, last Saturday night at the Austin Opera House. There's this uh, Indian guy named Bill Miller who's got an album coming out. I think I'm going to go over to Nashville. We're going to write some songs together. Uh, you write your own lyrics, but do you write your own music as well? Brad and I generally work at it together. Uh, I ain't that good at writing music. So I get an idea of what I want, and he plays, and I say, hey, that works or that don't work. <laughs> Uh, for the future, do you plan on uh, do you plan on sticking with the music, or do you are you thinking about keeping on branching out into your other areas as well? well I'll, or just I'll, do, I'll do everything. The, the music's been real interesting in the past few years because it's gotten so much reaction. And as long as people keep wanting to hear it, I'll keep doing it. And, uh, we're uh, doing uh, we're doing a lot of shows, and mm -hmm. uh, it's getting to be more and more so. So as long as there's any anybody interested, I'll keep on doing it. Sure. Well, before you go, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, the Festival of, of the Eagle you're, right. that you're involved in? Yeah, that's the Kerrville Folk Festival, which is uh, 
It's been going on for 20 something years in Kerrville, Texas. A guy named Rod Kennedy does it every summer. It's like three weeks. They have all these, these folky country people. So for the second week of next summer, which will be the second week in June, it's going to be all Indian-oriented stuff. And that's what they're calling the Festival of the Eagle. I'm on like the planning committee of it. There's going to be a lot of famous Indian musicians and some white musicians who do Indian-oriented stuff in it. Well, tell us, um, tell us a couple more of the, before you, before you go, tell us a couple more of your um, songs on your album, but some of the other names of them that we might can be listening for. Uh, well, the ones they've been playing mostly, I think, uh, there's one uh, called uh, Living Life is a Living Target, which is real synthesizer stuff, and it's about prairie dogs. Um, you know what a prairie dog is? Mm -hmm. a rodent that no longer lives in Texas, but uh, they run and hide, uh, and they don't get eaten. And uh, I made an analogy with human beings that uh, if, they run, if you run fast enough, you don't get eaten. <laughs> and there's one called An Open Letter to Illegal Aliens, in which the illegal aliens are uh, Europeans, which I say the... Uh, it wasn't that the Sioux and Comanche Border Patrol had such uh, bad immigration laws, it's just that they couldn't keep up with the uh, European uh, whipnecks. And I've got one um, called The Texas Indian, uh, which is a rewriting of an old Texas folk song called The Texas Ranger, in yeah, which a uh, Texas Ranger talks about um, how when uh, he had to go fight his first Indian fight, he didn't want to fight. So I changed it around from the Indian side about an Indian who did want to fight. He wanted to uh, run the Texas Rangers off and run the uh, Texans out of Texas. Well, we really appreciate you coming. And we, well, thank you. we ho hope you a lot of success for you. Thank you. Coming up next, a look beyond. So stay with us.